It seems now more than ever we need to be ensuring we have adequate levels of vitamin D, as more and more research is coming out showing how vital vitamin D is for the immune system. It also supports the health of our brain and nervous system, regulates insulin levels, supports lung function and cardiovascular health, and it influences the expression of genes involved in cancer development. Ideally, we need our serum 25-hydroxyvitamin D levels to be between 40 and 60 nanograms per milliliter, which is 100 to 150 nanomoles per liter. This astonishing study found that women with blood concentrations of vitamin D higher than 40 nanograms per milliliter had a 67% lower risk of cancer, compared with women with levels lower than 20 nanograms per milliliter. The researchers concluded that optimal levels for cancer prevention are between 40 and 60 nanograms per milliliter, and that most cancers occur in people with vitamin D blood levels between 10 and 40. So we can see, especially for those of us who don't get enough direct sunlight, either due to our work life or how far we live from the equator, how important it is to take vitamin D supplements. However, recently I learned that not everyone can absorb vitamin D well from supplements, and that even some people despite taking large doses of vitamin D3 a day are still vitamin D deficient. So are there some simple, quick and effective ways to help enhance our vitamin D absorption from supplements? Well, let's hear first as Dr. Michael Greger tells us more about the connection between vitamin D and cancer, and then as he shares some tips with us on how to increase absorption. Higher vitamin D levels are associated with improved survival in colorectal cancer and in breast cancer. In fact, about double the risk of breast cancer recurrence and death in women with the lowest vitamin D levels. And vitamin D levels also associated with longer survival with ovarian cancer and other cancers like lymphoma. But bottom line, you have to put it to the test. We now have a few randomized controlled trials and vitamin D supplements do indeed appear to reduce the risk of dying from cancer. What dose? The researchers suggest uh, maybe getting blood levels up to at least around 75 nanomoles per liter, uh, levels not reached by as many as three quarters of women with breast cancer, or a striking 97% of colon cancer patients. Getting up to these kind of levels, 75 or perhaps even better, 100, might require about mm, two to 4,000 international units of vitamin D a day, levels of intake for which there appear to be no credible evidence of harm. The findings of these kind of studies may have a profound influence on future cancer treatment. What do you do if you're one of the 42% of Americans with vitamin D deficiency are put on a vitamin D supplement regimen and your levels still don't budge? That kept happening to this group of docs at the Cleveland Clinic. In our practice, they wrote, it is common to see patients treated with vitamin D supplements who do not achieve an appreciable rise in their vitamin D level after therapy despite you know large prescribed doses. So they did a few experiments and concluded that taking vitamin D with the largest meal improves absorption and results in higher blood levels of vitamin D. Just that one simple change in timing results in about a 50% increase in blood levels of vitamin D achieved. They conclude, it therefore seems reasonable to ask patients to take vitamin D supplements with their largest meal because it may be a cost-effective strategy that could very well help patients to achieve optimal serum levels of vitamin D. Vitamin D is absorbed 32% better when eaten with a fat source, like olives, avocados or flaxseed. This is because vitamin D is fat soluble. Sufficient magnesium levels are essential to properly transport and activate vitamin D. Suboptimal magnesium status is relevant to vitamin D because magnesium is needed for binding 25-hydroxyvitamin D to the vitamin D binding protein for circulation around the body and delivery to tissues throughout the body. Magnesium is also required for the conversion of 25-hydroxyvitamin D to the active 125-dihydroxyvitamin D hormone form. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe for more upcoming videos.